Good evening, everyone. Welcome for welcome to joining our Nav Live session this evening. Um, this is Saint Andrew Church of Christ, our Navigating Life um, series webinar. Um, welcome to everyone. We are about to begin at this time. Um, we continue our topic: Is she or he the right one, or the one? Um, the session will be led by. Brother Trevor Smith and Brother Alan Casey. But before we do their introductions, um, I invite you to both me as we offer a word of prayer, please. Our Father and Eternal God, we thank you for today, for yet another day, oh Father, that you have blessed us with. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your many blessings in this life. We thank you, O oh Father, for Jesus Christ, who you sent to die for our sins. As we are about to begin our session this evening, we Pray, Father, that you will bless our presenters, that you will bless also, Father, as the audience, that we will truly, Father, listen with the intention to learn more of what it takes, O oh, Father, to start and build healthy relationships, and that these will be applied to our lives, O oh, Father, as we seek to walk that life that is pleasing before you. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your mercies, for your blessings, and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord and Savior. Amen. Again, welcome to everyone um, to our Navigating Life sessions. We have these on first and third Saturdays on the, on the month, starting at 6.30 p.m. Tonight, we continue our series, Is She or He the One? All the recordings for our webinars are available on the church website, the church website where the media is located. It's www.standardchurchofchrist.org slash media. Um, I'll post that in the chat um, so that you can um, get access to that at a later time. Um, all the recordings for the past webinars, as well as our Sunday morning services are posted on our church website. So that will be shared momentarily. But at this time, we'll introduce our speakers, or our presenters, I should say. Brother Trevor Smith is a member of the St. Andrew Church of Christ, and he's a behavior modification coach, and also the CEO of Successful People Academy. Um, he provides unique perspectives on interpersonal relationships, as well as self-monitor and behavior. He's an experienced educator with decades of experience in corporate coaching, and he's the author of Success in Marriage, and also seven keys to lasting relationships. He holds an EMBA in business admin from the University of Technology. Co-presenter, um, Brother Alan Casey, has been a Christian for over 33 years, and he's a counseling psychologist for over eight years. He has hands-on experience in counseling and several serving several congregation and entities. He was trained in Alabama at the Heritage Christian University. And Andre holds a Bachelor of Arts in Bible with a minor in counseling. He also has his master's in counseling psychology from the Northern Caribbean University in Manchester, Mandeville. So without further ado, I invite um, our presenters to begin their presentation. And welcome. I will be... Um, leading, uh, starting the process anyway, uh, along with Brother Andre. And today we want to look at um, completing. We just want to go back through the checklist very quickly because I see new faces on, so you might not have got it. Uh, so we want to look at the checklist, my checklist uh, of what you should look at when you want to enter into a lasting relationship, or really the keys that would underpin um, a successful relationship. So I'm gonna run through that quickly because I do want to um, spend some time on one aspect that is not normally 
dealt with as we look at relationships, and that is the issue of gaslighting. So I wanna look at this as a, as a one area uh, that if you could pick up beforehand, uh, whether you are in fact trying to end, seeking to enter into a relationship that, with someone who is going to manipulate you, uh, then it would help because that, this is really a very dangerous thing. Uh, so I come to that. So I'm gonna just run through the list quickly, the checklist, and then get to um, this uh, issue of gaslighting. All right. Okay, sorry, I was distracted by that. So let us um, look at the our checklist. Uh, you are able, you are uh, invited to post, uh, comment in the chat, it's, and we will you know, try to monitor the chat and to see how how how, how um, we can respond to um, any questions that you may want to ask or any issues that you might want to have addressed. If we can't get to it here, we you know during the session we will actually look at them towards the end and to see how we can actually um, address the issues that you have because we understand that these sessions are about you. It's not for us to just throw information at, at you. This is really about you and the issues that you have. Okay, so let's run through um, the checklist quickly. We did this in the last session, but some of you might not be here and little reinforcement is not bad. So <clears throat> the first thing that we are saying is that <clears throat> healthy relationships really um, should be grounded uh, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a perspective, uh, a, a positive perspective about God, a recognition that there is something outside of yourself, something that um, <clears throat> you value outside of your own views and your own thoughts. Yeah? So we believe that if there is a fear of God, there are certain things that that individual um, will not do. Put it that way. Right? So that's what we want to do. At least have them have a perspective that's beyond, that's outside of my views. Um, and you stand a better chance because when the person um, lives a life that um, is totally based on their views um, and what they hold to be true, then you could have problems. We just have to look globally at individuals who hold um, views that are not in keeping with um, <clears throat> reality, then you can see the problem. The other issue that we want to look at is what is the view of the individual? Um, bear in mind that this session that we're talking about in terms of is she or he uh, the one, we're looking at it from a perspective of getting into marriage. Okay, so it's a long-term perspective and um, from the Church of Christ position, of course, we would want a long-term relationship to be in the context of marriage. <clears throat> Just want to put those parameters around it. So how is the institution of marriage viewed by the person? You know, in the dialogue that you're having um, with this individual, does it come up? Is it something that um, they're comfortable with? So those are some of the things that you need to look at. Um, what it would be like living long-term with this um, individual. That's another issue to, to look at. Yeah, it's nice um, when you have the six pack and the you know, Coca-Cola bottle, but what happens when um, those things go? Uh, is it still all right? Those are questions that you need to ask. All right. And then this is a big one. What if something goes wrong? with the individual where you have to cure, where they may be bedridden and so on. Um, are you willing to care for that person? Can you see yourself um, spending time um, just really being with that individual, All right? Okay, so again, Brother Andre in a, in, a, in a session earlier 
and, and discuss this whole issue of age differential. Do not underestimate it. Within certain ranges, it's okay. But what happens um, later on? You know, um, I think somebody made a comment in my last session um, that there could be an agreement, an arrangement, as to an understanding of what happens um, when the older gentleman, for example, um, is not able to um, perform certain duties, that there could be an understanding. Remember, we're coming from a position um, that that's not, that's not okay. So, okay. So, <clears throat> so be careful about um, those issues that right now it might seem to be okay uh, and we, you know, the attraction is there, et cetera, but be, be thoughtful. All right, so let, we're moving forward again um, because we have covered this ground, so we don't want to um, go there. But if you do have a, an issue, if you are in a position where um, this is presenting a challenge for you, please, you could type in the chat and we will pause and address it if necessary. And then money issue. Yeah, um, it's nice, um, you know, <laughs> uh, to have this person on your arm and, and you really are a very attractive couple, you know, yeah, wonderful. Uh, but at the end of the day, the question that we ask is that you have plans, you have dreams right now, you want certain things, you know, um, Maybe you want to own a home, you want to have children, you want to be able to send them, have them get educated, all sorts of things. Maybe you want to travel the world. I, I, I don't know what your dreams are. But bear in mind, when you enter into a relationship, and again, we're looking at a long-term relationship in marriage, going on forward many years, um, ask yourself the question, if this was a business relationship and you were doing your due diligence, would this person fit as a partner? Would this be a, a, a proper investor in your business? Because nobody goes into business to be worse off. And I'm suggesting that we don't go into relationships in order to be worse off. So I don't know if you want to look at it as cynical, a mercenary, I, I, I'm, I'm all right with all of that. The question is this, if you enter into this relationship with the individual, be clear in your mind, be clear in your mind as to how this is going to turn out financially. Um, so there are, again, the last session, there were questions about, um, a, 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 let us say a woman um, who, you know, is really well off, you know, and she's saying, hey, I will take care of you. Don't worry about it. I will take care of you. You just come, you know, money is no problem. Um, I want you to understand what that does to the individual who is on the receiving end, what that does to the self-esteem, what that does to um, mindset, etc. It's nice at the start and for a while, but after a while, um, certain things you know, the first time there's a little problem or, you know, an issue, um, you might have it thrown back into your face. Uh, and so just understand that <laughs> love is powerful. But um, Brother Andre will tell you that a lot of the cases that he has to deal with, and, you know, are wrapped around financial issues. Don't underestimate the impact of money problems on relationships and on unfilled relationships. So just want to um, hammer that home that do not ignore it, do not ignore it. Right? So you need to ask this big question here, as we go forward, how is this going to be financed? Do I give up my dreams and aspirations in order to um, go into this absolute you know, um, paradise, this wonderful, just dream relationship. Mm, okay. All right. Got it. Brother Andre, remember you not, not to be silent. Okay. I know we're probably going already, but I just want to make sure that you're you are around and 
ready to go in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but all, all excellent was so far. Um, um, finances in the top five reasons for divorce. Um, by the way, um, is in the top five reasons for divorce. If you can hear me, um, so so you are spot on. Um, also, the when when you also mentioned the idea that folks would need to, um, you know, definitely know what they're getting into and um, how the, the age differences and, and things like that. Um, you know, we, 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 we constantly find those issues today. Um, we're not different ages and, and the different things that persons are going through, the different interests that different persons do have and whether or not they want to um, whether or not those there, there are similar interests, literally, um, you know. So, and we have uh, a lot of issues right there too. Uh, yeah, but that's it. That's it. So. Okay. Yeah, we're going to come to the interest in a while. So, I just want to run through this because I really want to look at this, the massive one in terms of the potential for manipulation. All right. So, the other thing is the background again. I don't want to come across as if we are saying that you can't have differences in terms of um, backgrounds and people have to be um, similar and you know whether it is race or um, culture and so on. It's just that you really want it to be successful. Yeah. What I want to do is to put Brother Andre out of, out of job and the divorce lawyers out of work in the sense that, you know, let us try and see as much as possible, how can we avoid um, for the relationship to break down and not work out. And so one of the things I have to think about is that, let us say you're getting married at 25, okay? Young, but 25. So if you think about it, that's 50 years of different socialization that's coming together with a bang, right? Walk down the aisle and bam, 50 years. You are being socialized, you go all up with the thought processes, a lot of things are now ingrained into what you consider to be true and how we should go about things. And your partner has the same thing, 25 years of socialization. And yet still you're supposed to come together and it's just smooth, it's just seamless. Everything is just wonderful and we just understand each other. It doesn't always work like that. And the, 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 the greater the difference in terms of the socialization and, and you know, it's, it, and, and the backgrounds, the harder it is, um, the more hurdles you have to clear. Not saying that it can't work. Nobody wants to say that, and so everybody is there. But you know, they say, "But I know so and so, um, or I, you know, I, I, I met my husband for, you know, passing by in the walkway in an airport, and we just hit it off, and we have been married now for seventy years." That's all right. <laughs> no problem with that. I'm not here to deal with the outliers. What we want to look at, though, are some of the considerations that could bring problems into um, setting up a long-term relationship. And so we want to look at that as an issue. Right? So another big one would be then to look at the family history. And I'm going to tell you why. Sorry, let me go back up there to that. Well, I'm telling you why the family history is important. Because um, there are the values, there are experiences, there are things that you hold to be true. So <laughs> one of the things that we have been emphasizing is take time, take time, go through the process, get to know the family, get to know the in-laws, get to know these things. So an example that I give is that there is a family gathering and you know, all the cousins and uncles and aunts and whoever is are there in the gathering. And as you go through and you meet the family, you realize that um, you, know, you hear the history. Um, this one was married today, but, but they're now divorced. And basically um, divorces are, <laughs> rife in, 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 in that family circle. I'm not saying that you can't break the mold, etc. but just again, just find out, just, just see what it is or to understand the hurdle that you have to, 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 to um, 
clear. That's basically what we're saying. Yeah. So in situations like that, the risk is, for example, that you have some dis disagreement, which people are going to have. Um, is it then that, as you call mommy, she's saying, okay, pack your bags, I'll be around to pick you up? Or is it an advice to say, no, yeah. stay and work it out? You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. So that's, those are the kind of things that you have to think about um, as you go forward. And then <laughs> um, yeah. the outlaws, yeah. So this is it, so what is it? Um, can you get along with them? Uh, so if you come to visit um, and she's not there, are you comfortable with your seat and everybody's welcoming you? Or as you drive through the gate, um, you start to hear jingling of keys and say, oh, I have to go and pick up something, you know? <laughs> and the in-laws are disappearing. That's, that's the kind of thing that you have to look at and vice versa. Um, with your family, um, accept um, the individual and really care for them. And, you know, happy, you know, glad when you're not around as a matter of fact, they get some time with, you, with them. Consideration. All right, <clears throat> let's move forward. Um, and <laughs> what about the two sets now? Forget you and them, whatever it is. Can they get along? Or do they have total um, irreconcilable differences between the in-laws? Yeah so that they would be at daggers drawn. Happens, trust me. All right, then let's move forward. Um, conflict, important to understand how conflict is managed, yeah? Uh, um, what do, um, is there anger management issue? Have you ever seen them upset? And how, what happens when they're upset? And if you have never seen them upset, hmm? <laughs> this person walk on water. Um, and so maybe you really need to spend some more time um, with that individual because we tend to get upset. And then what about physical violence or abuse? You know, we're going to talk about abuse in another way in a little while, but um, how they play, you know, I cited a situation where um, somebody had a broken arm and they were just playing. They were just Playing. That is what the defense was. Um, so, <clears throat> are they sensitive to pain, hurt? That, you know, those are signals that you might be actually entering into um, abusive situation. What about integrity? Um, somebody defended the, the cheating at Monopoly and said this part of it, part of the game, is to steal money out of the bank and so on. Uh, Okay, I don't know. Um, I don't play a lot of mon Monopoly, but I didn't understand that to be part of the rules. But games, just generally. Um, if it is tennis you play, um, how do they call the lines? You know, <laughs> uh, ball in the middle of the court, out. Yeah, so those are some of the things that you have to look at to see, is this somebody who um, is a person of integrity? And then <clears throat> what about the Winning and the losing. You know, you have some um, losers. Oh, sorry. Uh, something was announced today. There you, are. So you have some losers that are sore losers, and you have some winners who are intolerable winners. So you need to look at that as well. Um, yeah. Is it something that you can live with? Um, or, or, or are you going to have to allow the person to win all the time? Because when they lose, it's... It's just too much, yeah. Um, I hope these are not scaring off anybody if I'm getting into a relationship, but um, I, I, I think that they are helpful. So the other one would be um, the physical attraction and um, there needs to be chemistry. Yes, because that's part of the game as well. That's gonna make a difference, but um, I didn't spend a lot of time on it, and probably tonight again, we're not going to spend a lot of time, but this, this test driving is, is, is really a problem. Um, and the, um, we don't know the age of the people that are listening, so we're coaching this in this language. 
And if we go into the showroom and we test drive um, a vehicle and we decide ultimately that we want to buy it, we don't want the test drive vehicle. We want another one that has not touched the road. We want <laughs> to drive um, <clears throat> car out of the showroom ourselves. We don't want one that has been driven. Not a pre-owned car, nothing to that. And so um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, put myself in trouble with our the men that are listening in that um, there is a sense that some men um, like to um, test drive vehicles before they choose. Um, yeah, that's, that's something. And um, running up the score might be a consideration. I just want to share with all um, ladies, women, female side of the persons listening, that you have um, you have the power. Um, I want to go back to, if you're going to the scriptures, I see somebody with a hand up. I'm going to look, talk to you in a minute, but just let me just go through this, please. Uh, Galaxy 7, I don't know the name, but I'll come to you in a minute. The key um, in the scriptures, uh, the name slip, <laughs> keep my heart right on the tip of my tongue, but I got distracted by the hundreds. But yeah, there was someone who pined and was almost sick, um, you know, because he wanted Tamar, right, exactly. Um, he needed to have, you know, was so spellbound by Tamar, needed to have this, this, this you know, half sister. Um, and they, you know, had his brother. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, there we go, Natalie. Sorry, good to have good people. Yeah, and Tamar. So, yeah, and um, they set, up, set, set her up, unfortunately, and raped her. And the scriptures tell us that, you know, the hate that he had for her was greater than you know, the desire, the passion that he had before. And so sometimes um, when you achieve um, your goal, you know, you set up and you want to get it and sometimes you get to the goal and it just feels as if, oh, okay. Um, and there you know, it's all right. Um, <laughs> I have achieved my objective, let me move on. Be careful. Okay, I'm gonna let Galaxy 7, Please, no sermons, just a quick question. Go ahead. You can speak. You don't want to put up your mic. No? Okay, I'm gonna lower your hand then and we go back to where we are. All right. And then um that's you, brother Andre, that wanted to speak? Well, no, that wasn't me, but um, I, I, can I say something quickly? Please, please, please. Yeah, sure. Um, the, 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 there is a slight little shift um, and we're, we're literally, um, so, so the males might initiate, but, 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 but we're saying here that the females, now you have a lot of females who are initiating too. Absolutely. And yeah. not, not only that, not only that, even if the males initiate, um, the, the females, um, um, uh, you know, congregate. <laughs> so, I'm just, so I guess I'm saying that, that the truth be told, there is, uh, so even if somebody um, does the initiating, um, so, so, the other, somebody's agreeing. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot, lot, lot more freedom. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the point I want to make as well is that um, along that line, I don't want to go down that road, but the, there's a sense of um, feeling that my womanhood is defined by having a child. And so um, one way or the other, uh, whether the relationship lasts, at least I have this. It's almost like a um, a little dolly, a live dolly baby, uh, and, and so that's part of the mentality as well, which is a real problem. Um, because I'm only saying to you that 
a, a, a new car, I still want to, going to use my analogy, a new car, um, if you drive it out um, in for a little bit, basically, um, the value goes down. Yeah? As long as you have a little bit more um, miles and the odometer, automatically it goes down. Maybe nothing wrong with it. It's still crisp and it still even smell new. Um, so all I'm just saying to you is that be careful, um, women, um, as to what it is that you do. There is power in what you have. Mm -hmm. Can I say one more thing too? Oh, please go, go, go. Like that, that, um, that, that there, there, studies are out there, literally, that, that, that shares or suggest that, that those who get involved with each other prior to marriage, um, the, 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 the discipline, um, the discipline is different. In that, in that, mm -hmm. the 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 uh, if marriage is the mechanism for me to to be to be engaged with this person, um, in a sensual or sexual way, if marriage is the mechanism, then what you're saying that you are you're prepared to buffet your body because marriage is that important to you, and it's and it is only in this context I'm prepared to um, be sexually involved with with this person. Um, if, however, um, um, you're prepared to have to, to, to be sexually involved prior to marriage, then in essence you're saying um, marriage, marriage does not carry that same level of importance. But, but, my, but pleasure in me and, and my sexual satisfaction um, can be had um, in or out of marriage. Okay, good point, good point. Last word on it, last word on it is do not overestimate your ability to, um, to resist. Yeah, trust me. Um, yeah. That thing has power um, that you don't believe. So I know, we have seen it many times um, where people feel, yeah man, no, it's not a problem. And they put themselves in situations that um, end up the way that they didn't want to. So just be careful. All right, so the other one is, and this is a big, big, big one. Yeah. Um, during the, 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 the excitement period, etc., cetera, um, try to find out if you have mutual interests. Um, are there things that you can do together? If you are interested in sports, is this person um, interested in sports? Um, can you go and knit together? You know, art. This is important because after a while, the physical is not going to be, you know, always central to, to what's happening around. So you're going to also need to have to be relating to the person otherwise. Um, one test, and for me, this is a, an important test, is um, see how conversations go when you're apart, okay? Where there's no, you're not seeing each other, um, you really just voice, voice away from each other. No pawing, no nothing, you just separate. And just see. And if the conversation is, well, all right then, uh-huh, okay. Um, and there are long pauses, and I really have anything to say to you, and you have nothing to say to them. And basically, uh, that's a guide. That's a guide, yeah? Very, very animated and wonderful when you are, you know, in the presence and so on. But away, there's absolutely a lot of, um, and, you know, all right then, watch for that. That is a clue, that's a clue. On the other hand, if you've gone, you know, you just actually put the credit on your phone and then you have gone and gone until you write, oh no, credit gone. Why? Can you talk to the person and you don't even know how long you talk? Da, now you have something going. That's a suggestion, right? Fine. <laughs> Again, these things are not foolproof. Maybe you just have a person that just like run up their mouth and just chat. <laughs> but 
but at least you know that there is something. And just listen to the dialogue as well. Do you get a chance to speak? You know, are you being heard? Those are some of the things that you want to look at. All right. I think that those are the checklists. Just wanted to share that there is, if you want to get some work, a lot of the stuff came from Seven Keys to a Lasting Relationship, which is on Amazon. And it happens to, I happen to be um, responsible for it. Also, we do behavioral assessments. Uh, you can get that in the chat. But I want to move to um, a major one, and it's not just for relationships now. This, this actually relates to um, how we live. So if we're going to be manipulated. So let me bring this up. But are there any questions or comments as we move along? Anybody has any question about what we just shared in terms of the checklist? Any clarifications required? Going, going, gone. All right. So, really want to talk about this issue of gaslighting. And <laughs> I think it has come to the fore um, from the political scene. scene you know, there is a um, question related to, or, or it, it relates to activities of um, a leader of um, a country and, well, not only the leader, but a whole set of people. So let me give you part of the, 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 the um, political context. Um, I guess lighting situation would have come up when um, I am inspired to leave my home late at night in the cold, cold wind, weather and go and link up with maybe 20,000 people closely without a mask in the middle of a pandemic. Um, because I need to hear this person speak or I need to be supporting this person. And so where the gaslighting comes in is that my reality has been um, manipulated where I do not see any danger in that. In other words, what is real for me um, has been turned upside down. That's one, 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 one manifestation of um, someone who has been gaslighted. And the whole concept comes around. What do you hold to be true? And um, how you are manipulated to no longer see that as true or to really start to question, is it, is it real, is it not? Um, similarly, along again, still using the sort of political thing would be the, the question of um, climate change. Climate change is a hoax. Um, when <laughs> all the scientific evidence is there, but I have to believe it is a hoax because this person who I, always want to trust and I believe in and I'm committed to could not be lying. Yeah. I do not want to see this person as 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 someone who would mislead me. So therefore, for me, I have now come to the conclusion that climate change is a hoax. Despite all of that evidence and so now, in order to be able to justify that, I have to see that evidence as fake news. These people are trying to manipulate um, me by presenting all of this data, which of course is not correct, because I know that this person who I trust and believe in says it is not. That's gaslighting. All right, so what is the relevance? 
to relationships, same thing happens. Same thing happens. I will not tell you where, where it comes from, but basically that is the reality, that what you hold to be true is, um, doesn't align with the gaslighter, what it, that they are suggesting, they are posit um, positing as, as true. And you then um, disconnect yourself from what you held to be true and align yourself to what the gaslighter um, says. And as we will see, it's pretty dangerous because gaslighters understand the power of the manipulation, what it can do, how much power it gives them over you and over others. And so they will use it to your destruction. Yeah, so you do not, do not want to get into a long-term relationship with someone who understands the power of gaslighting and are, they are willing to use it. Yeah, we will see um, where it comes from so you will understand the context in a while. So let me just go here. Right. So um, this is not my handiwork. This, uh, <laughs> so let me just be upfront and just share that um, this is work done by um, I'm just reviewing the work done here. All right. So Robin. So let's let's look at it. So this is it. So it refers to this act of undermining another person's reality by um, denying facts, environment around them, or their feelings. So it actually gets into um, the person's feelings too. We'll see it. Um, after a while, you start to question. Um, you used to feel this way, but the person tells you that, no, you're not. And you start to <laughs> deny even your own feelings. All right. So this is it. Uh, so actually, it, it deals with the whole question of um, who you are, who you are. Right? And it happens as we go along. The question, though, is, um, is this consistent? Um, is it an individual and so on. At some point in time, yeah, we, we, we all either gaslight or are gaslighted, but is it a, a permanent feature? Yeah? And as we say, it can be pretty dangerous. And that's why you really want to look at it um, as it can impact you emotionally, psychologically, and um, in, the quest, in the areas of physical abuse. So let me go there. Um, I don't know. It, there is an argument going around that uh, justifying physical abuse of, in a relationship where the person is thinking that, oh, it's because he loves you, why, why will he hit you? That, that is the epitome of, of gaslighting and the impact on your physical being. And that's why somebody might actually stay in a relationship even though they are being battered um, because they feel that is person's love for them that this is happening and it suggests um, some element then of their reality um, having been manipulated to understand you know not hold true what <laughs> everybody knows should be true that this is just straight abuse so where it came from is actually this Patrick Hamilton wrote a book and they actually had it as a movie. Um, and in the movie, Gregory actually, at the end, he actually steals his wife's wealth by, you know, getting her to think she's crazy. So little things, for example, just where the gaslight comes, that he goes and he sets up the thing in the, in the attic um, and has the light flickering. And Paula, his wife would say, wait, wait why is the light flickering? And Gregory said, live, flicker, where? What? Are you where? Are you mad? Wish maybe you need to test your glasses. I don't see any flicker. That's that's what I'm talking about. 
And that's an example. And if you go through that kind of situation, after a while, um, Paul are going to come back and say, but, oh my gosh, I really need to go to the doctor because I see the light flickering, but, but Greg, we don't say, it's not flickering, no, mercy. I don't know what's happening to me. And that's, that's how it works. And, you know, um, and, and that's just one example. And then yeah, with another thing where she started a question, um, and then eventually, you know, am I losing my mind? Yes, you are, and you will. Well, not about it, it's a serious thing. So that's, that's the concept. The concept is that do you see you have a reality that in a normal state you know to be real, but a trusted source, somebody that you're committed to. That's really, really what it is, that, that, that commitment to the individual where you're saying, no, I want this to be real. I want this to be true because of my commitment, my affection, my whatever it is, um, respect for. And by the way, this now get, gets out of just a relationship because this can be family member, this can be a boss, this can be um, anybody. Yeah, you can be gaslighted. And it can be an, a whole organization. It can be a whole party um, that, that can be gaslighting a whole other thing. So just be, be aware, but it's critical that you don't find yourself. All right. So um, you need to make a little distinction that gaslighting is not the same, of, of same thing as, as, as sensitivity, right? Um, because you can have genuine disagreements um, and generally uh, functional couples can in fact um, resolve conflicts or should be able to resolve conflicts in a healthy way right? um, without using um, abusive because gaslighting is an abusive technique. So um, just gonna go through the slide and then bring brother Andre into um, share on the matter. But, so um, <clears throat> the distinction with the, the, the gaslighting thing is that one person is, is, is um, listening and being um, taken on board the other's perspective. But it's a one-way situation. So I am very interested. I, I, I understand I, I, I know almost every word that you say, I'm hanging on to it. And so, but it's a one-way street. Yeah. And the other side is somebody who is, I don't use the word manipulating, but <laughs> negating your perception. Uh, so pointing out that you're wrong, um, saying that, What's, why, why are you going on like that? <laughs> Look at it. I mean, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> What's up? No more. No, no, no. You're making a mountain. All of, that, all of those kind of things. So, yeah, it's a one, one sided thing. <laughs> and we have to understand that, really and truly, the victims of the gaslighting are not, they're not overly sensitive, really. Um, yeah, you have some people that, you know, might be more um, easily impacted um, emotionally and so on. Um, but gaslighting goes beyond just, just your behavior, your personality, um, your worldview. You, you can, in fact, be gaslighted um, whether you are firmly grounded or not. So it's not a personality issue. It's not a, um, yeah. It's really about somebody who is setting out to change your perception of reality. That's basically what it is, is to get you to a place where you're not actually sure about what is real and what is not. And, 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 and from that perspective, um, effectively have control, some control over you. But Andre, you want to come in? A lot of road to, to, to travel <laughs> to do it, but yeah. Um, I, I, I think you're doing an excellent job. Uh, the, the, so one of the things that jump out to me 
um, I'd, I'd, I'd come across this demo some time ago. Um, 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 and, but but it's, it's a wonderful reminder, believe you me. Not, not, not too long, Mark, but mm -hmm. the seminar mm -hmm. was introduced um, to us. And uh, one of the things that, that, that came out of it is, is name calling. <laughs> yep. yep. Idiot, foo foo, you know, in a sense. Um, a, a, a large part of it, um, you know, very undermining, literally. And, and, and again, as you have stated, it, it puts doubt into, into you who, who, you know, but, but, but I thought this was so, and all the evidence showed that it is so. But when the person finished with you, then you start to scratch your head. And, and then, and, 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 and then you, you not only doubt your own abilities, um, you start to give them more power over you. And, and in an amazing way now, um, when you used to, 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 to trust your own initiative, you, you, you become a, almost a slave to that person where you have to keep on going back to go to them for every and almost any major decisions, which make you very susceptible to develop a personality disorder, actually, um, um, dependent personality disorder. And this is where now you have to, every, every major decision has to be passed by that person or, or to get their approval to release you to function. And so, um, so, so, uh, yeah, and, and, and unfortunately, it, it, it plagues relationships. Um, um, I, I, I hear you say something, and, and, I, and I agree with you. I scratch my head, though, although I agree with you. <laughs> <All day. laughs> um, and, and I have to be careful that, that I don't, that I don't, um, that, that, that I don't um, um, put anybody in, a, in any type of category. But, but, but I have done some other, some more things, and, and it, and you do have some personalities though that are a lot more susceptible to, to, to executing, whether they are on the receiving end <laughs> or they are not going there since, since you never got there and you are supposed to be the expert on that. So you know what? I'm not going to go there either. <laughs> Okay, no, all right. I know what you're saying. I know what you're talking. Um, yeah, the behavioral styles, yeah. Okay, so some of the behavioral styles, yeah, definitely. Um, I think where you want to go is that the D style, um, yeah, uh, would be more likely to um, be uh, in that role, and, 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 and the S style would be um, more likely to be susceptible. So yeah, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want to lock it down into uh, into I the. I agree, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but that that applies. That definitely applies. Right, right. You know. Um, so. Yeah. So I think people would have picked up as well um, that the person or the, the group that I um, mentioned with the climate change has that has that, has that kind of D style. Um, personality, behavioral style, and uh, and yeah, manipulating persons who want to be led. Yeah, that's that's that's. I want a leader. I want you know. When you look at the exit polls, you would see I want a strong leader. That's that's part of the mindset that makes you more susceptible to um, gaslighting. Because whatever the leader says. I'm, I'm ready to go yeah. um, um, I, I don't uh, know. Okay, so that's, that's one of the things. Go ahead, go ahead. No, well, well, well I, was, I was going to ask you, I don't know if you have some other information, so I'm just, just going to stop and allow you to, um, to finish up. No, you have all that, that more. <laughs> all oh. that more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more stuff. I want to talk about why is it relevant, um, how you can spot it, and what you can do about it. Right. If I can get it all done today, though, unfortunately, <laughs> again, but uh, I'm going to try and go through. Uh, but if anybody has questions, again, still maybe at the end, we can try to do something about it. All right. Yeah, no, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. All right. So this is, this is where we we're talking about that it, uh, it, 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 it the gaslighting thing, you give the person some kind of a, um, 
control over you. That's that's where really the, the issue is. There is a respect. There is a awe. Uh, there is a oh, you know, um, one person is more vulnerable, and the other person seizes upon that. So that's that's really what is what is happening. Yeah? So now this is it. Let me just read this actually. <laughs> um, gaslighting can happen in any kind of relationship where one person is so important to the other that they don't want to take the chance of upsetting or losing them. Yeah. So in the relationship thing, it could be then that fun, you know, how long I'm looking for, you know, a healthy relationship and this person is just perfect for me. There's not anything that you want to do to mess it up. So if they say that the sky is red, yes. Oh my gosh, you know, they didn't always realize that. Yes, thank you. That's, that's basically what it is. And you start little by little doing this. Yeah. There is a, I'm just thinking of a, a, a show that I saw. Um, it was, I think it was, yeah, it's a super manipulator guy who actually um, who had, had you ask your question, do you think you could actually murder somebody? And the person, absolutely not. And they brought them through the process little by little, just getting them to agree to do something that they probably didn't want to do. And, you know, just etch it up, etch it up, etch it up a little bit and set up a scenario where actually um, the person actually pushed somebody, you know, it was set up so that the guy wouldn't actually die, but they thought they were pushing them to their death of a high building. Um, so, so these are, you know, persons that would never think of. So that's what I'm saying to you, that this situation is dangerous where you can step by step, things that you don't think you could do, you could get man manipulated to the point where you actually do it. Yeah? So especially, right? Um, I'm not picking on um, any gender. I'm just saying to you that yes, this is the one. Oh boy! And you, you know, relinquish gradually <laughs> some of the things that you before wouldn't think of doing. I wouldn't, you know, accept. But in order to not lose this one you do the things, yeah? So for example, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm gonna go there in the politics, that a year, or, you know, or, or something, one, one um, cycle before, um, it's a year now, we cannot appoint a, a, a Supreme Court judge. It's just against principle that the election is so near. And you know, for us to appoint, no, no, you have to us wait. And then, four years after, um, in the middle, in the middle of an election, you do it. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you're attracted to um, a power source that has caused you to give up on your principles, your values, things that you hold to be true. Um, no, um, you have to let go because if you don't let it go, then you are going to offend this individual and offending this individual comes at a price and you're not prepared to pay that price. That's what happens. So you have to watch again. And a bigger new note is to think about your attachment. Look at what it is when you get that self so attached to anything, but someone in this case, um, and to see what that attachment can cause. Yeah. So, so this is the point where there is a continuing process. Little by little, you make the person's feelings um, invalid, make them just questions. So you, you, know, you chop away <laughs> at everything that they hold to be true. And after a while, they start to wonder, ah, could I be imagining this? Why am I making up this story? Um, it's, not a, it's not real, yeah? 
but it's but it's real. One of the examples um, that, that that Robin gives is uh, in the relationship, the guy starts to question. You know, he sets it all up where he questions his wife's management of money. You know, um, and yeah, usually there's a little bit of fact. So yes, maybe she has not been saving as much. You know, she's spent you know spend out the money a little bit, etc. Um, and so he sows the seed. So a lot of discussion about that. All right. So he starts to travel. Um, and she notices that when he is away, um, money goes out of the joint account, significant money. So she starts to question. She starts to wonder um, what's happening. Why? You know, and in her mind, she's wondering, I wonder if there's a relationship, something going on, etc. cetera. Uh, so she asked, initially she started to ask about, hey, what's happening with the thing? And she's saying, well, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know that, <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not good at this uh, managing the money. So, you know, <laughs> just leave it to me, man, you know. You know, this is not your thing, yes? This money management thing is not your thing. Um, so, you know, does deflect the whole question as to what's going on when he's away. It's just question about the money thing. And of course, she then go back, goes back now and she starts to think about, yeah, yeah, in truth. And in fact, you know, yeah, I'm not so good at this. And, you know, whatever. It turns out afterwards, yes, he's having a relationship. And that's why the money is being spent over there, whatever it is. But she has no opportunity to, to really confront on that issue because as the money thing is raised, um, he said, well, you know, oh my gosh, we'll come back to this again. You know, you're not, you know, it's not your thing. That's the kind of thing that we talk about, that after a while now, you're wondering, um, should I ask about it? But no, when you get the pushback that I don't know about the money. Yeah, that's how you can actually um, defend your own actions by pouncing on weaknesses or areas of vulnerability that you have sewn into the person's thing, tied around a little bit of truth. Yeah. So that's it. So how do you recognize that gaslighting is happening? I'm just gonna give you some of the things that she pointed out, some of these things. You ask yourself, am I really too sensitive? Am I, do I really have a bad memory? Do I? Um, Am I really so bad at um, managing money? Those kind of things where you, where you are really questioning if you're really that poor at whatever it is. Yeah. Am I really? Yeah. So <laughs> once you get yourself into things where before you weren't questioning, yeah. yeah. So let us say you want to go on a date. And can I decide where we go today? Oh, you know, um, every time you you choose the place, <laughs> it turns out to me that that it, it, it's a bomb. It don't really work out. Maybe one time you suggested something and you go there and the food wasn't right, and ah oh boy, I got this now. So every time you suggest, no, can we go to, no, you know that when you decide on things, it's it, well, trust me. No, you better just leave this to me. Um, that is, that's this gaslight. Every time, you know, you just want to find that you're all right. You have been going out all your life. You choose where you're going and you're happy and you have, have great fun with your friends. But now you start to wonder, am I really, yeah. That's, those are some of the things, yeah? And then, yeah, once you go into that kind of thing, then when you're already the person or in that relationship, you're, you're kind of just confused because so many things that you held to be true and, you know, you feel confident about. It's, it's questioned and you kind of wonder, what is going on here? And, and of course, when you say, let us go to so-and-so, no, you know that, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's okay. All right, you decide. That's what happens after a while. You find yourself all the time, you're gonna do this? No, no, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I should have known better, I, you know. What's happening to you then? 
you get a low and low, more doubt, more doubt, more control, more control on the other side. All right? <laughs> um, and so in that mode, who's happy? Nobody's happy. Nobody's as happy in that kind of situation. So therefore you start to find that you're getting, um, um, yeah, you find that you are not happy in the relationship. All right. Sorry, give me one second. Make a housekeeping. Right. So you frequently make excuse for the person's behavior as well. Yeah? Because they do something, you still have your sanity, you still have your whatever it is through you. Um, see the person doing it and you're saying, hey, I don't, I don't link that to um, the person that I, you know, I'm enamored about, you know, that this is, that's not a fit. So you don't make an excuse. Or maybe he was sleepy, maybe he's tired, maybe something happened or somebody forced him to. So you start to make excuse for the behaviors that you can't identify with, with this individual. And so something is going on, but you can't put your finger on it. You just know that you're uncompatible. Yeah? And when you get, <laughs> well, you know that you can't this, or you know that, you know that, you know that, um, you start to tell yourself a lie now that, yeah, it's true, it's true. So you start to lie to yourself. And here, Aunt Brother Andre summed it up nicely, is that after a while, even simple things, you doubt yourself, yeah? And here comes the last of self-esteem. I'm just not good enough, yeah? So, so you seed all of what it is that you have brought to the table to this individual. And so I want to just read this text, so that is important. So while all of these symptoms can occur with anxiety disorders, depression, and low, our low self-esteem, all the things that Brother Andre make his money doing, and the difference with gaslighting is that there's another person or group that is, that is actively engaged in trying to make you second guess what you know is true. If you do not typically experience these feelings with other people, but do it with one particular individual, then you might be the victim of a gaslighter or gaslighting. So that's what it is. Just, just be careful. So again, if you're looking at your relationship, look at some of these things. Look at whether um, what you held to be true is being cleverly um, manipulated. All right. So what are some of the common phrases you might hear from your gaslighter? Why are you so sensitive? I mean, where you get that from? No one. Yeah. And, and, and the reason what you know why this is happening is because you're so insecure. Yeah, man. Why are you questioning me? Well, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm working, I'm, a, I'm on that trip, I'm doing business, you know. Um, why are you so insecure? Why you believe? No, come on. <laughs> you're really crazy. <laughs> oh boy. You know you sound crazy? Yeah, man. You know that, don't you? Yeah, sure. Oh boy, you're just paranoid. <laughs> come back with this again. You know, I'm, I don't get it. Right? Um, and, you know, you basically just love throwing me off track. And here's a clever one. You plant the seed, and then you say, Joe, I was just joking, man. Huh? The person hear it, though, etc. right? Okay. Um, and then, of course, you're just making it up. Yeah. Man, that's a figment of your imagination. Where you get that from? <laughs> Other one is, oh, 
chorus. That's it. no big thing. Where, 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 are making, where are you making a first law? This is no big thing. Oh, your imagination running wild when you trust me. And you're just overreacting. It's, it's, it's not where you do. Okay. Marcel is asking, what if you're actually too sensitive for real? <laughs> um, how do I answer that? I would just want to know that I want to determine whether I'm too sensitive for real for myself. I don't want anybody to tell me that or to push me into that direction. Let me make that determination for myself. All right? Don't know, that is not a good answer for you, you know, but uh, I'm only saying that um, I want to make the decision. I want to come to that conclusion myself. I don't want to um, have you tell me that I'm too sensitive. Right? And the man says, saying, yeah, I guess I have to be very self-aware. Exactly. That's, you have to hold on to your own reality. Right? We're going to come to that in a little while now. Uh, but the whole thing is, don't allow yourself to be so easily um, manipulated. That's what I'm saying. You have to question. And, and, and we do this, by the way, um, in terms of... Uh, what's going on here? That's... This thing. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yes, you. That yeah, that's it, Marcel. You, you and 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 it works in in areas. That's why I want to limit. Sorry, extend it beyond just relationship because it it works um in the workplace. It works in all over, all over, and it works on the grand scale. If you look at the political situation, that's part of what it is as well. That you get your base, as it is called, and whatever you state is truth. Yes? And, and so if you get so caught up with that base and get yourself so tied into it, then the, quest, the news, fake news, it was said. I, I heard Leslie Stahl saying, that um, can't say President Trump told her that the reason why he um, brought up this thing about fake news is that whenever he did something wrong and the, the news media that was well respected all along said something about it, he could say, no, it's fake news. So it was a deliberate gaslighting strategy. So my base would not believe anything wrong about me because of that commitment, because I am the savior, I am the hero, I am the whatever. That's basically what it is. So when we are looking at ourselves, Marcia, we have to be careful how we align ourselves to anyone, any movement, anybody, and to make sure that, that alignment, that attachment doesn't make us lose the values, lose our understanding, our principles, lose of what we, our capacity to question. That's a big one. Capacity to question what's going on, our capacity to investigate, to go deeper, to say, huh, is that true? How does that compare with what I know, uh, with what others are saying? Please don't block yourself into a corner uh, whereby you accept as gospel anything that's coming from a source. Question it, question it. So that's, that's um, I hope that that answers the question. Yeah. What, what is it? Go ahead, please, sir. That's how you're about to give me no go ahead. <laughs> No, um, the only thing I'd probably just want to, to, to add in relation to a question um, um, is the idea that uh, a person's opinion of us doesn't identify who we are. 
A person's opinion of us does not identify who we are. And so um, we have, uh, I would want to say, um, uh, a certain kind of mindset or behavior, especially here in, in our country, and our culture, I should state, that, that we are tellers. We, 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 we love to, to tell people, you need to, you need to, you need to, and you need to, you need to, you need to. And so we don't invite persons to, to, um, you know, to have an opinion about something. And once we don't like it, then of course, we, will, we want to almost manipulate them into um, accepting um, our ideology thinking process or just the way something must be done. Um, and we find that the, that, is, that, that is done a lot into, into relationships too, where, you know, we, we literally almost want to call on people. And if we can't use brute force to tell them how to, then of course we can use even sadness and cry and tears and, and or show, show them up. Absolutely. Uh, Right, you know, and, and show them up in, in different ways too and say, listen, you know, a matter of fact, so we're just so that I believe we do so much gaslighting here in our country that, and, and, and somebody might say, what's the man, how you know, why do you say that? How many times have we said, you think you're an idiot? You take me feel that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> that very term alone. <laughs> you take me feel that, not you? <laughs> might just be, might just be, um, an onslaught of gaslighting. <laughs> <Why would that? laughs> Make such a response. Um, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. The key, the key there, though, what you're saying, though, is that once you're saying that, it means that you you have called it out. You have named it. You know, you 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 see that it's happening, and you. They, they, I'm I'm going to say something um, bad, maybe not 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 as comfortable to land, but gaslighting. Um, people are more susceptible to gaslighting um, when they are not as educated, if you want, or, or inter, you know, like inter the intellectual capacity is, 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 is not developed fully. Because usually in, the, in those cases, you, you ask more questions, you challenge things, you, 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 you know, you grow to um, weigh up information that's coming in. And the, the, the more uh, or the less um, propensity you have to question things and to weigh information to see how valid it is, um, the more likely you are to be um, susceptible to gaslighting. That's that's a that's an important question. All right. So yeah, I'm going to be answering the questions as to where we go. We got their solutions. Let I, I me mean, push forward here. All right. So, so some other phrases that you can hear from the gaslighter is by, you know, you're a drama queen, trust me. Get so worked up over the simple matter, you know, make mountain out of mole. No, 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 never in life. That just did not happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> You know, the reason why I call is that you don't know, remember things, you know. <laughs> you know, say so you don't have no good memory. <laughs> Your problem, you know. All right. So, yeah, that's it. Why? Trust me. You just have, you are tied things together that have no connection at all. You just get so hysterical over nothing at all. And this, this is a big one, you know, this is where the thing coming you now. And you're, 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 the ingrate, you know, you know, you know, you know, I'm sure you're so ungrateful, you know. You understand what I do for you, you know. You know that I put your husband's, your husband's work? Yes. And you know, I'm with me, you know. I'm not too ungrateful. Yeah. <laughs> and then here, nobody believes you. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, nobody not believe that. You know, so why, 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 why should I? There we go. So all right, what do you do if you are being gaslighted? So here, are, here are some other things. Might have to be you guys for a few minutes. I would love to finish it um, today, um, so we can move on. So first of all, is that you have to identify the problem. And Andre talked about it. Uh, you take me for idiot. Yeah, that is identifying the problem. That's the first step. 
and you have to name what is going on between you. You know, you can use the Jamaican thing, you take me for an idiot. Um, but yeah, call it out. Yeah, um, that, hey, I see it. I understand what's happening here. You're manipulating me and that is abuse. Yeah, call it out. And as I say, it can be somebody that you're dating. It can be somebody that you're married with for a long time. Even friends, family, boss, work, whatever. Um, we're talking church. People in there can manipulate your church by the church system. Uh, so that's the, first, that's the thing. Right? Um, here's a little strategy. And this is, this is a good thing to do, by the way, if you feel like you're losing your reality. Um, is to write it down, you know, <laughs> so that I have this conversation and make it not like some little jotting stuff what's going on. Um, before we start this conversation, I believe that the sky was blue. Um, Brother Andre you now is telling me that it is not blue. Yes, just want to write that down. And then after we finish the conversation and I cool off my head at some other point in time, I go back. Um, and in the interim, I am now seeing a, a very red sky. <laughs> uh, but when I go back to my notes, I realize that wait, the sky was actually blue before I spoke to Brother Andre. So maybe I need to go and investigate what is the color of the sky. Let me go ask some people. Let me go do a Google search. Let me go do some things. Yeah. So that's 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 one strategy. And I'm just using the sky blue, whatever red just as an example, but just what it is that you thought about yourself or about an issue, write it down, have the conversation as you're going on, and then you can go back and check it afterwards, and then you can see. And as you see these conversations developing more and more and more, then you, you need to have to question yourself as to whether this person is not really doing this deliberately. Yeah? All right. Figure out if you're in a power struggle with the thing. So that's usually what it is. It's, it, this, this gaslighting is, is, is a quest for power. They want to control you, want to manipulate you, definitely. So that's where it is. So one of the things they could look at then is that we're coming back to the same space, same place, and we're going over the same things again. And basically, um, there's no shift. You know our reality, and the attempt to get you to accept another reality isn't working out. So you can start to see what's happening here. This is a big one. This is a big one. What it is is that some persons who are in abusive relationships or who are hanging on because um, they feel as if um, they can lose this person, etc. Uh, I give you a, a quick example. I remember um, a young lady came to a worship service, she got the message and she was convicted and she was in tears. I remember um, talking to her, what she was saying is that she's in a relationship and um, that was a major challenge that how does she get out of the relationship? Because it's, you know, it's not a, it's a um, she was living with somebody. So that's, that's a question that we have sometimes is that the, hold that the person ha have on you is so great that you cannot envision life outside. And this is where the mindset things come in, that you have to steal yourself, get to the place where you actually start to imagine, just in your head, you don't have to jump up yet, but in your head, imagine life away from the person. Have that, that and see it in all this glory, all of the benefits that you have. Don't be so focused on um, what you might lose. It's, it's, it's a difficult task, but it, it's helpful for you to see another reality, another possibility. Yeah? So the possibility then is that you can actually own your reality, make your own decisions. Yes, that's what you um, will have when you get out of a gaslighting situation, right? I want to be disciplined, so um, I'm <laughs> not sure we're going to finish today. Um, so, Brother Andre, I don't know if we can carry it over to um, the other thing. But, yeah, I don't want to be 
um, in discipline. We tell people to come on time at 6.30. We want to finish at 8. So um, I'm going to do one more because I still have a couple of minutes. Let me just check the chat here. Christian Papua, yes, envision a new reality without this relationship. Yes, but a lot, yeah, Marcia. So a lot of persons um, can't see themselves, especially, for example, in situations where there is like a money, money challenge, um, or where one person is, you know, um, less educated, can't really see how they are, they're getting very young, can't see a way that they could actually um, manage life on their own. And so they put up with, they, 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 it's not has to be physical abuse, it can be also um, mental abuse, where you actually just put the person down consistently because um, you're, you're totally dependent. You, you know, you, you, you couldn't, you, you think you could have managed on your own? No man, you're crazy. You know, it's an old life tough. And, and that's part of um, where, the, where people actually stay in difficult situation. Um, yeah. So the key would be envision another existence with more freedoms, more possibilities for yourselves where you are empowered and you're not just manipulated. People who are in those situations are not always happy. I can promise you. They also want to think for themselves. Yeah. And we have relationships that are going on. People are kind of happy. But one aspect of it is a mothering. You know, that kind of mothering thing where the person, I suppose the gender is, is out there. I'm sorry. But let me just use the mothering one first. Where the person, you know, has the children, whatever it is. And they also want to mother the husband, you know, where they, you know, everything that you want to do, you have, no, do this, everything, you know, um, and there's a feeling as if, um, if I don't tell you what to do, you're going to mess it up, yeah, and so therefore that's why I'm at it, and again, what you're doing is diminishing the spouses, so let me just be gender neutral, diminishing the spouses, feel, sense of a capacity, their capacity is diminished. They don't feel as if they can function effectively. You have your correct everything, you know, even the community things. And the person then gets the sense that, you know, well, yeah. So you would have a husband that would see things that not so right and just deal with it and not say anything. Or sorry, I shouldn't say it that way. You have a wife that would see things and just fix it up and don't say anything. But if the husband see one little thing out of place, they're going to fix it and say, look, you know, see, I have to fix this again. And you say, I have, have fixed this by the agenda. But that's basically what it is. Is that one spouse see a problem, just deal with it and move on. Um, the other one see it and it's a big thing. Oh boy, look at this, I fix this up again for you. Oh my, see, I have to walk up behind you all the time. Oh my gosh, what the, kind of person are you? Um, that's part of the, the problem that we have. And in that situation, not everybody is happy. Not everybody is comfortable. I just raised in this too because it is something that is uh, critical. We are at eight o'clock. Um, what say you? I have, it's like a dozen of them. So uh, yeah, let's be realistic. Let me stop. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, if there were number eight, I'd want to possibly um, introduce something. Notice I would do it, possibly introduce something as um, immediacy with no time to process. There's two things I want to say. So number eight, um, if there were to be a number eight or whatever, but- We have 12, so we can- Okay, fine, okay, sorry, okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but, but, but this idea that, that I need to, you need to come on board with what I think uh, um, now, and you don't get an opportunity to process be the feelings or, or even the, in, the the information. So that I, I was wanting. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So we can add it. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I'm going to suggest that we just go through this because it is so important, and it's not just you know that you know we can invite a, 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 a wider um, group in terms of that is not just you now somebody who's seeking is he or she. This goes actually into where you want to go, which is a relationship. You now in making the relationship last 
and, and it's, you know, this is wider than even um, romantic relationships. This, as you can see. Uh, but I want to say something else to Brother Fred. Go ahead. And that is uh, that, that I think it would be to, to, keep, to keep everything here in context and, and that we don't take, take these things in isolation. In other words, um, it would be best if, if we see all eight of them or all 12 of them being executed or, or at least five or six of them being executed for us to say this fall under the ambit of okay. that person, rather than because sometimes we might see one mm -hmm. of them and the truth is the context necessitates the fact that um, you need to hear the information or, or you need to be told and 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 uh, and because you're telling me no, I, I'm going to push back and say, see, you're just, you're just lighting me. So all I'm okay, saying... Right, okay, good. I got it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Because, yes, I know people have a... Um, we just need, need, need a, a, a little bit of something and then we use it to mark everything as, as that. I agree. All right. So I want to thank you for your time. Um, we're not going to do that. Just bear in mind that we are back on the 21st of November. So it's the first and the third. Um, if you got value, I'm suggesting um, that you invite a friend, a colleague, or somebody that you are in a relationship with to participate. Um, so that's it.